When the Los Angeles Valiant faced off against the London Spitfire on Saturday this week, the match started out looking like it was going to be a blowout for the London Spitfire. Little did we know, it was about to become the most riveting match of the week, with Silk Threat and Soon battling back. And who better to have the call than Mr. X and Uber? The first map in this series will be Dorado, and I find this to be a very pertinent point because the London Spitfire dropped this particular map to the Florida Mayhem. This has also been a good map for the Los Angeles Valiant. This is where the home team are going to want to start off strong. Let's make some noise. It's a Saturday morning, Blizzard Arena. Wake up! And let's make sure everyone is on board. Big shout out to our friends over in Europe as well. It's a little bit late in the day. The Valiant had already lost so many players. The Prophet drops. Vayne looking for more. Primal Rage is going to be there. This could be scary. Nask gets taken down. Looking for a target there. Silk Threat just cutting it up. It's an easy target. It doesn't even move. No legs to run away. But for Dosen. Catches Silk Threat with the Ribbon Gun as he tries to jump on through. But it's looking good for the Valiant. We're seeing momentum here, Matt, and they are converting. Yeah, the players for London are very low here. It's just going to be murdering and Prophet, the only ones alive. You have oh, five players alive here for the Valiant. They will be able to take point A. Tick next to his name up the top. The Prophet's looking for the Dragon Blade. Doesn't quite get the damage up on high on Kareem, but he chases him. He's dogged, relentless in his pursuit of his winged targets. Prophet down to 30 HP, but a bit of extra heal should get the job done. If Unko does use the transcendence in that fight, it doesn't really save the Valiant, but it's a chance. Soon wants to bring things back. Pulse Bomb there. He's looking to finish off. Fish them three in the fight. Make it four against the D suit. I'll count that as a kill just for the sake of argument. Soon goes absolutely big, and the French Tracer showing why he's a top three player. A Tracer in this Overwatch League. Oh, lucky fight for the Valiant. Silk Road with the blade. Finds Prophet, but again, the Moth Lady. Nuss is already getting the resurrect. It's pretty much counted out the effect of the Dragon Blade entirely. And now the Valiant are running out of steam. Transcendence in over the point here. Silk Road looking to make a difference, but it's so hard. Big bodies to try and cut through, and they get rid of him. This big fire now starting to stand tall as Fate and Envy are completely split apart in this fight. Yes, they find Nuss, but they need to get on the payload. No! Not gonna happen with the self-destruct. Most of the defensive ultimates, but neither was able to stay alive long enough to get them back. There's just no way they can come back. A beautiful fight from the Spitfire. I've got to say the timing of their kills on the supports was excellent. They did use a Valkyrie, but they still have a Transcendence. That's such a cheap fight to win. Great stuff. Perfectly. The machinations, of course, of this Korean team. But a little bit too much, and now it's going to be the Dragon Blade in Kareem. Just got melted instantly. Umko is a quick 180 from Prophet, and he's removed. Fate is also executed. Three men down. And the Valiant really getting no progress at all. Fisher and Prophet, the only players in the fight to get kills. That's all that London needed, and now they're on the final stretch home. Yeah, now Nuss and Valkyrie was able to get all the way back to Bedosa to heal him up because you had Soon and Silk Threat diving that Zenyatta on the back of the payload. You figure if you are the Valiant, your best chance there was to dive Bedosa and get him to use the Transcendence a little bit early. Oh my god! They have it in the next fight, they get Kareev right away. It's gonna be Silk Threat with a Dragon Blade trying to make a play. No one does it like these guys when it comes to dive, man. Silk Threat having to back away from the Tesla rifle knows his life is in danger. Pulse Bomb drop, does get the DC on Fury, but Silk Threat has to just run away. He's pretty much on his own now and he's swatted aside with just the right hand. And that's all that the Spitfire really had to commit to that fight and now it's fate on his own, surrounded upon all sides. What a stunning Dorado play from the London Spitfire. They're already well and truly awake. And it's early in the series, but already Big Ben is ringing out as London make a strong statement early. Horizon Lunar Colony is where we're heading next. Stargazers rejoice. The Valiant <laughs> have been running the gauntlet. This is not practice anymore. We're not in the scrim yeah. world. It's serious business out here. I'm gonna say, just watch how fast Unko will be able to build up to this Moira alt. 51% and counting. You're able to generate so much when you have the large hook. It'll be agility. It's taken out Fury here first. And this position is gonna make it very difficult for Bird Ring to get any kind of line of sight on the Widow. That Biotic Orb is doing so much healing such that Unko already has Coalescence available. It ignores shields. It's gonna cut straight through with damage. People like Fisher trying to stand behind it. He can't block it with a Defense Matrix and now it comes out here. Unko, you can see the healing and the damage being provided. An attempted halt there just helped Unko. All of his team was bunched together so the healing was easy to provide. Go left, go left. Hold on. Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Sweet, 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 sweet. Deep here. It's gonna be Rascal putting up a Maywall. Traps three in. He gets taken out though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Birdring 
decides that he hasn't had enough of the spotlight so far, and he decides to get a little bit of break dancing in the middle of the Valiant setup there with that Mercy Resurrect. The Fury now looking for his opposite take fate. Takes down Bedosa, but fate's gonna be chased down himself with agility. Gets himself a Helix Rocket Kill and Bird off camera. Now the Reza start coming in. Thick and fast. Bedosa's back, switching down. Fury going in now. It's gonna be the self destruct over the point. Trying for the body blast, but gets nothing. Now it's gonna be an attempt of the Doom Fist for Rascal. No! He gets shut down as well. Nothing to be done. No punching. It's not subtle. It's not pretty. But the Valiant at the very least get themselves over the line. Fury just has to give a bit of respect here. But up goes down. I remember this Mercy Res might be the start of something new. Yes, but Ocean's back. EMP now is back on the table. But so is Unco. Transcendence is available, but that's the EMP. Unco did get hit with the EMP. He does go down without getting to use his trans at all. But he's back. He gets res. He brings it out, but it might be a little bit too late here. You can see Fate is off the table. Pulse bombs from both traces doing work. Kareem found Rascal in the fight. Widowmaker's out of the picture. Fury back. Has a chance to get his resuit at the very least. And Ethel's found Bird with Fisher down. Unko's getting it done. Two ticks, though, and the Valiant might just have to back away from this one and respect. Yeah, the Valiant lose their tanks. It'll be London taking point A. And we're just going to put it out there. Look at that. Oh, Pulse bomb does get eaten, actually, by the Korean. Fisher dies in, but it's a slap to the back of the head. Rascal brought back from his reverie and reminded exactly where he is right now. This is the Valiant's home by the looks of things. And they're going to go for another aggressive dive. Another capitulation from the Spitfire. The Dragon Blade, yeah, but it's a fight extent for a very long time. Rascal down. Learning. Rascal down is going to be an instant resurrect. Now they're looking for Bedosin as well. Pulse Bomb was dropped on him. Both support now. Need to worry really wake up here. Nuff needs to get that resurrect on Bedosin, but he can't. It's soon on towards Rascal. Rascal's died twice in this fight. And now Fate gets brought back to life. Fury chasing on it soon. One tick now for the Spitfire. They need a lot more than that. But again, Nuss is doing so much healing from up in the air. Resuit here and attempted from Envy now just to stall this one out a little bit. More. There's a Dragon Blade for Agilities. Agilities has to go big now. He needs to get in to get this one done. There's only the one support item in here for the Spitfire. The Transcendence could take his day apart. Oh, that's two! Agilities needs more though. The Mercy might be down, but there's more work to be done. Soon dodging up on that point there, and Fisher finds a Primal Rage kill. Soon is stalling. He must stay alive, but he just can't do it. Fidoshi cuts him down. Oh, it's neck and neck. <laughs> One minute in the bank for both of these teams, and this map mat is going all the way. Beast here in the spot, who's playing the ride. So clever. Not allowing the shield to come back in, that's going to allow Jumpman to get a ton of free damage. The tire already, that is such a smart play there from Bird. The London Spitfire know exactly what they're doing. They plan this perfectly. You can see that Envy tries to jump into Fisher with a rocket boost, but Fisher had that extra resilience, of course, using Fortify. He'll be immune to CC and damage, at least a degree of it, and that was convincing. I mean, this is tough. The point where they've got big bodies with a lot of HP and Envy has very little himself. He's down. Trying to pressure fate was Fisher, but it's a devil riptide from Agilities. He may have just bailed the Valiant out, but I need to get on the point. It's almost one tick. You can see now it's down to the Mercy just to store it out. They can't afford to allow that to happen. Kareem valiantly trying to keep his team in this one, no pun intended, but it may not be enough. Too hard to break through the Spitfire. It goes all the way. Overtime comes up. But the Spitfire were a step ahead on both attack and defense. Well, guys, uh, for all those that are thirsty for a bit of uh, brawling action, a bit of rough and tumble on a control map, it's not a mirage, it is an actual oasis. We're heading straight there for our next map again. Another map where we've seen the Valiant be quite good, but the Spitfire just be imperious. Not required, but Agilities has a bit of space to work, and now the Barrage come in. Fury, nothing he could do. He was more than happy to commit that to the kill. Fisher making it very scary for Agilities, though. Eats a lot of that damage, is able to survive. And now they're hunting Rascal yet again. You can see that, oh, Unko wants a bit as well. Classic old school Unko in with the blaster. Looking to try and get some kills on that Mercy, but again, 99 to zero here. This might be the shutout for the Los Angeles Valley, and they're looking good, they're looking real good. What's this diva again? You can't block the hook with the defense matrix. Oh, that's a nice pick though. Should be a fade away, but Bedosa didn't have the time. Or maybe he didn't have the cooldown. He suffered a far nastier fate than Unco did when he got hooked in. And now it's time to party. Giving him the whole hog and even the rest.
rest of it. Agility's is hungry, and he's making sure the Spitfire now. That's another big hook with it. Perhaps some confusion now. Agility's goes in. Chain hook connects on towards his opposite number there. Rascal down. He's out of the picture. The Coalescence claims to kill him. Now the whole hog to push them away. Agility's is getting serious here. Fisher forced back, almost knocked off the edge, but he's able to survive. Hook now connecting in the bird ring, and he's down. We're now in the overtime. The wick is burning, and the Los Angeles now finally spread their wings. The Valiant are on fire, and we have ourselves a series we've been looking for. The Western Hope shows that they deserve the title, perhaps. And there's much more to be done. So just so you guys know, this may well be the last map of this series. Obviously, if the Spitfire take this, it's a 3-1. It's a series victory for them. If the Los Angeles Valiant win this map, we'll be going to a fifth and final map coming on in. But just a lot of power, firepower for the Valiant here on the point. You're Go kidding me! That is that is sick. sick. Launches the self-destruct on his way down. There is a wreck available for the Spitfire. An incredible start in this fight. But now, with the road paved, the rest of the work still needs to be done. Oh, once both supports are out of the equation, though, it's just a matter of time. Soon here on the point, playing Tracer just searching for where Bird Ring is. Where Prophet's playing. Prophet goes all the way back to the Valiant spawn. No, they're doing trying this. to spawn camp here. Prophet gets Unko off the spawn. So you're not going to have that Zenyatta coming in here for the Valiant. The Valiant getting very close here to taking the point, though. Prophet gets back with the Resurrector and puts Birdrink back in the sky. But Silk Threat should be up there to contest him soon with a Pulse Bomb. Why not just use it on the deep? Oh! He may have gotten more than he bargained for. Prophet was playing so close to Fury that he was himself blown up by the Pulse Bomb. Silk Thread needs one more shot there to finish the kill. Nuss went down. He's getting the damage done as this Farah. A good attempt at stalling from the Spitfire, but ultimately it's fruitless in the Valley. And now, on the board. And you see Silk Thread with a rip tire of his own. Kareeb gonna go over to 76, get back in the fight. Can the Spitfire get back towards the point? They have to be careful, because the Ripfire coming in from Silk Thread. No Resurrector as well. Nuss has switched off the Mercy. The kills keep coming. And it's perfect for the Valiant. They're making their way forward, and Fate proudly stands upon a payload to propel it forward to the right deal goal. Not finished, Los Angeles. Not sitting down without a fight, but definitely pushed right to the end. Safe distance away. Soon made a brief foray into the back line, but thinks better of it pretty quickly. Gesture takes to the sky to try and get some help back, but Bedosin might be in trouble. Under scrutiny, and Silkwood finds him with the Dragon Blade. Bertrand and Bedosin are back up on their feet. Unko down, but Nuss won't get a second shot at this one. Unko now back as well. The Resurrect is there. With Fate dropping, Gesture knows he needs to back away, and finally the Valiant get themselves back in control. It looked like they were letting things slip. And just with only, before, with only 10 seconds left, you just lose Fury here. He's gonna go off the side. It's just Jester and Prophet up here for London. Three seconds, Jester will be able to get a touch. Can they get anybody else there? He won't even get there, no. doesn't even get there! The Los Angeles Valiants turn up! They put their money where their mouth is, and they're taking us to a fifth map. Professional Overwatch doesn't boast one of the longest histories in terms of esports, but definitely one of the most exciting, and many of those exciting matches are off the back of reverse sweeps, all those big game fives. And this might be one of the map. Li Zhang yes. Tower, last map of the series. It's going all the way here in the Blizzard Arena between Los Angeles and the London Spitfire. Prophet to to do here with the grab. It'll be interesting, does not have to worry about the defense matrix, right? Because Diva's not on the other side anymore. It'll be all the damage coming down here from London. Not much to be said about that one. The Spitfire looking real good now. They seem to have things sorted out. Jesh has been a big force. A lot of coalescences from Bedosin again. No real impactful ultimates on the horizon for the LA Valley. The problem, map with the multi-tank composition is that if you're getting behind, you just don't get ultimates. And that was it. The Spitfire already taken it away. Despite the fact that there was an Earth Shatter in the mix. Make sure he stays in step of the Valiant and has a sightline at all. Agility, he cannot be doing that. It's too risky. Up in the air, he pops. And come oh, oh, down he comes there as well. Look at that. Unko tries to go for the Resurrect. Birdring is controlling this match. The Genji switch has not been enough to deal with him, but he killed him another time. There's just no opportunity for the Valiant to get involved here. Birdring is deciding who does what, where, when, how, and why. Not for the point. The Spitfire now looking to cap things out. The Valkyrie's here though. Unko's arrived. The deal is his back, but is it enough? Is it too late for this kind of Hail Mary play? Envy back. Fate now is going to get cut down. I think it's not going to be enough. Fat. Sad to say, but the Valiant might have just fallen short of the glory they're so desperately and doggedly seeking. Bedosin has himself a transcendence here and soon is looking to try and make the difference, but we're in overtime now. Bertrand the Dragon Blade claims soon. Envy, desperate now. It's gonna be Kareem jumping onto the point with his own transcendence. There's a lot of action on the screen. Hard to pick through, but Prophet is still trying to chase down Unko. Kareem is dead. He's an Omnic pancake right now. Fake the next to drop. The wick burns down. One by one is being contested here. No all day, man. Watch me! And there it is! The Spitfire comes back from what was looking like a compromising situation. A 
again, a mass time to the Valley and looked so much better off a day, really tightened up the belt. And that seemed like such a dominant performance until right at the very end, but they were pushed all the way. Yeah, the LA Valiant played great all series long. That last map, though, were not able to put it together. London holds very strong at the end. I thought Bird Ring was phenomenal on that last point. Made a difference on the Widowmaker, did a tremendous job when he switched over to the Genji.